Father, we thank you. We bless you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your, your love for us. We thank you for your mercy, your kindness, and your grace. We pray that you would um, just continue to minister to us, to show us your will, to show us your power, to show us your glory. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's turn. Psalm 62, verse 1. It said, Truly, my soul waits upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long? So will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall you be, and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwards, inwardly. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. So David was going through a time when he had to wait only on God, right? He had to. He had people coming against him. He had people speaking speaking against him. He had people, um, you know, blessing with their mouth but cursing inwardly. People wanted to see him fall. People wanted to see him fail, and he had to trust only in God. He had to trust only in Yah. He had to trust only in the Most High, who was his rock and who was his defense. So we're going to talk today about waiting on God. We're just going to talk today about waiting on Him. A lot of times, people are untrustworthy. Doesn't mean we can't love people, but we have to understand that the Scripture says, don't put trust in men. Only put trust in God. Okay? Only put trust in God. Wait upon wait only on Him. Okay, so you have to wait out things. <laughs> you have to wait out the wicked. You have to wait on God. And you have to be patient while you have faith. Okay? God rewards those that wait on Him in faith. So when you wait on God, you also have to wait in faith. Not in despair, but in faith. Okay? Yah rewards those who are waiting on him while doing his instructions and speaking of his work. So that's three words right there. Waiting. Everybody say waiting. Waiting. Doing. Everybody say doing. And speaking. We must be waiting, number one, on him. We must be doing his instructions and we must be speaking his word. Speaking his works, speaking his mighty acts in the future. You have to be confident in what God has said. You have to be confident in his promise. You have to be confident that your obedience is going to be rewarded. The Bible says that, um, that uh, let's see, Hebrews 11, I think, uh, I think it's verse 6. It says, without faith is impo- it is impossible to please God, for he is rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It said, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So when you come to God, 
and you're waiting on him, not only do you have to believe that he exists, you also have to believe that he's a rewarder. So when you're waiting on him, you're not only waiting, you're also doing what he said, and you're also speaking of his mighty work in the future tense. A lot of times you see men of God in the Bible, they spoke about what was going to happen in the future. Why? Because they were confident. David, David walked up to Goliath and was like, I'm going to take your head off. <laughs> it didn't happen yet. He was like, listen, God is with me. Listen, today I'm going to feed you to the birds. I'm going to feed you to the dogs, right? Confidence. When Abraham went up that mountain to sacrifice his son, he told his servant, we're going to return back to you in a couple days. Just wait a minute, right? Because he had confidence in the resurrection. He said, even if I do kill my son, I believe that there's going to be a resurrection. Anytime God has something for you, you're going to have to wait on him. Not only that, you're going to have to speak his future works. You're going to have to speak in future tense. You're going to have to say what God's going to do. Okay, because without faith, it is impossible to please him. Right? Because uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, number one, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we must wait upon him. We must do his instructions. And we must speak of his mighty works in the future tense. And so the psalm said, My soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation, my faith, is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock and my strength and my refuge is in God. Okay? So we must wait upon him. Because he's the one that saves us. He's the one that is our rock. Let's go to uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10. You know, waiting upon God is a, is a, a concept that David talked a lot about. David, you know, as the... <sighs> Jesus is called the son of David for a reason, but because David was a king on which Yeshua sits his throne on, right? So David was a man after God's own heart. David was who God basically enthroned Jerusalem in, like this is called the seat of David, right? Even this to this day, the house, the house of prayer is called the tabernacle of David, because that's how zealous David was for worship all the war that David did, all the Philistines and the enemies that he defeated he invested all that money into worship and prayer, so he was a man after God's own heart, even though he wasn't perfect, he had some sin, he had some some lust issues, but he's this, he was a worshiper for sure he, and the Psalms, you know carry a lot of his heart for worship but also, there's another king that talked about waiting, that had principles of waiting in his book. And that's found in Proverbs. The son of David, Solomon, has a lot of wisdom on why it's important to wait. Proverbs 10, verse 25, it says, As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. So when the whirlwind passes, the wicked will going to disappear, right? But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. So when you live in righteous, when you're doing his instructions, you can just be confident that you're going to be there when everybody disappears, okay? Down to verse 27, Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of Yahuwah prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So these are time-based promises. A lot of the promises of the results of wisdom are based on time. Write that down, write that down. A lot of the promises that are connected to wisdom are based on time. Okay, he said, wait, wait, right? He didn't say wait, but look, the scripture says, the fear of Yahuwah prolongeth days. 
it prolongs your days. When you walk in the fear of Yah, it prolongs your days. Then it says the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So that gives an assumption that if you walk in wisdom, time will be extended for you. But if you walk in foolishness, time will be shortened for you. So that means all you got to do is wait. <laughs> all you got to do is wait. Okay? Sometimes you have to wait things out. If you're walking in wisdom, you got to wait things out sometimes. Next verse, Proverbs 10, 28. It says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Remember that word expectation. My expectation is removed from him. The expectation of the wicked shall what? Perish. The things that the wicked want to see happen, if they wait, it's going to fail. But the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. People that are righteous and walk in God's ways, they'll be happy about what's happening. All they have to do is wait. Okay, everybody say, just wait. Just wait. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 11. Turn over to Proverbs 11. Verse 7. It says, when a wicked man dieth, his expectations shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perisheth. So whenever we have an evil person, right? Some wicked industry leader that promotes poison or promotes ungodliness or tells lies or creates wicked inventions. And we're dealing with the aftermath of it. Guess what? The Bible says that when he dies, his expectation is, is going to perish. When he, when he dies, his hope will perish, right? So when somebody dies, when a wicked man dies, everything they spent their life in investing in, guess what? It's going to disappear, right? Okay, so all we got to do is wait. Sometimes when wicked men are in the earth doing horrible things, right? Oppressing the poor, lying to the masses, deceiving people, killing people and murdering people, guess what? All you have to do is wait because the righteous are going to overtake the wicked. All you have to do is just wait. If I say just wait. Just wait. Proverbs chapter 12. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12. We talked about the psalm, uh, uh, the, the psalm of David. He said to wait on God. My hope is from him. Now let's look at some other things we have to wait on from Solomon. <clears throat> Why? Because when you live your life in wisdom, a lot of your promises are based on time. You have to continue to work wisdom, and you have to wait. You have to wait on God while doing His instruction and speaking of His mighty works. Okay? So this is what Solomon is doing. He's speaking the things that are going to happen in the future. He's speaking the things. Proverbs 12, verse 3. It says, A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. So when you see wickedness, don't be impressed because that's not going to be established. <laughs> it's going to be exposed. You can see it now. All the stuff that we, that we believe, the lies that we believed when we were in middle school and in high school that they taught, now you can find these things being exposed. We thought the earth was round, even though it made no sense at all. And we were just, you know, I remember being in class like, what is this? What does this really mean? Like, what? What are they talking about? Like, this is crazy. But you know, you're like, well, it must be facts because that's that's what they're teaching. That's what's written in these books, right? But now, all I have to do is what? Just wait. Pretty soon, the truth will be exposed. The Bible says that anything that's in secret will be put in the light, right? So we're seeing things that are being exposed right now in education, in industry. In, in science, in, in medicine. Lies that have been hidden for, for decades are now being exposed. All they had to do was just wait. I guarantee you there was somebody 50 years ago that knew everything that we're waking up to now, all right? right? But guess what? All they had to do was just wait. All they had to do was wait on that wicked person to die. And, then all had, and, and, and pretty soon the truth is gonna be out there, okay? We have to wait sometimes. Proverbs 12, verse 7. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. 
all you have to do is wait. Sometimes the wicked, after a certain amount of time, all the work that the wicked have done, it will be overthrown. Okay, even though they spread themselves out like a green bay tree, they, they grew, right? They flourished. Their lives flourished. Okay, they got wealth off of lies. They got rich off of lies. Their lives were the number one smash hit every year on the radio. <laughs> Their lives were the best selling books. Their lives were all over the TV screens. But guess what? Pretty soon they'll be overthrown. They will be overthrown. And they will be not. They will disappear. But the house of the what? Righteous shall stand. So being righteous is always going to pay off. All you have to do is wait. Amen. All you have to do is wait. Okay? Proverbs 12, 19. Going through some scriptures. It says, The lip of truth shall be established for what? Forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. A lying tongue is but for a moment. You ain't got to worry about people teaching false doctrine. You don't have to worry about people lying. It's only going to last a moment. But if you speak truth, your lip will last forever. The Bible says the lip of truth shall be established forever. A lying tongue is but for a moment. Yeah, the lie might outshine the truth for a moment. But all you got to do is wait. All we have to do is wait. Pretty soon, when the lies expire, and the liars expire, the truth will be right there and be established, and it will be seen before all. Okay? The Bible says, fret not. We're going to read Psalms 37 as well. Fret not. When the wicked is established, when the wicked is spreading himself like a green bay tree, right? Like a tree by the rivers of water. They're just growing and growing. But guess what? It's going to dry up one day. Okay? And when you live on the word, that will never dry up. <laughs> okay? Proverbs 14, 11. I just want to show you all these scriptures that's telling you the future. All these scriptures are telling you the future. Proverbs 14, 11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. So the righteous have to build something. Okay? The righteous have to build something. If you notice that the things that the wicked um, build will be overthrown, but the house of the righteous shall flourish. There's a story about this, um, this Asian island where they went to preach the gospel, right? A missionary wanted to preach the gospel at this Asian island. I think it was, it may have been South Korea. I saw a documentary on one of them, uh, Voice of the Martyr cartoons about it. This guy, he went to uh, preach in South Korea. And the governor at that time in South Korea was banning all the evangelists. Right? Okay? They went there. They tried to, um, they tried to, he tried to uh, get on a ship that was trying to do business with South Korea and be a translator, right, and help him, right? But then the owner of the ship decided he was going to declare war if they didn't trade with him, right? So he just, of course, you know, with, with you got evangelism and you got corrupt businessmen working together, ain't nothing new under the sun, right? <laughs> so the corrupt businessman decided he was going to wage war while the evangelist was trying to give out Bibles, right? Crazy. That's, that's how things happen in the... Western Empire, right? You got the you got the good and the bad all mixed together, right? So they went to war, and I guess the Korean island basically destroyed them all. He destroyed them all, but those copies of the Bible that he was giving out, they ended up getting to a little boy who started reading it, started preaching the gospel, right? After about a generation. The whole island was filled with the gospel. Amen. A generation after a generation, the whole island was filled with the gospel. And the, the very house that the governor used um, to basically, uh, the house of the governor who resisted the gospel ended up being a house where 
the Bible was preached and the Bible was uh, was given out. It ended up being a Christian house, right? So that's a very example of the very house of the person that persecuted the gospel that did not want the gospel in the region ended up being a place where the gospel was spread. And that's what this scripture means. The house of the wicked shall be what? Overthrown. But the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. All you have to do is wait. A lot of the things that we do in wisdom, it also depends on time. Okay? So we do have to wait. We have to wait while we pray. We have to wait while we do His will. And we also have to wait and speak of His mighty works in the future tense. Proverbs 11, 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. A lot of times people think because they can collaborate, that there is everything they do is okay because they can collaborate. But the Bible says, though hand join in hand, you're still going to be punished. <laughs> you can do you can do what do what's wrong or do what you want or do do your own will with a partner. Guess what? Both of y'all are still going to be punished, right? Okay? Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The righteous is not worried about getting people's approval to do God's will. The righteous are concerned about doing it and putting forth the seed. Okay? And then the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. A lot of times when you're righteous, you're more focused on being obedient and making disciples and raising your children than you are trying to partner and do what you and do your own will with other people. But the the hand that join in hands with the wicked, they will not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Okay? So focus on fruitfulness, focus on obedience, and just wait. Doesn't matter how, how, how many people join up together to do their own purpose, to do their own will. Guess what? Just wait and your seed will be delivered. So let's go back to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms. We have to wait in prayer. We have to trust in Him. We have to hope in Him. We have to wait on Him. We have to do His instructions. We have to speak of His work in the future tense. Right? As we walk in His wisdom, we have to realize that these are promises. Okay? Those that are wicked, they will expire. Those that are wicked will be overthrown. When you walk in righteousness, keep on building. Keep on bearing seed. Okay? Keep on making disciples. Guess what? In time, it's only going to be could be 10 years, could be 7 years, it could be 30 years, but guess what? If you stay on wisdom, all you got to do is wait. The wicked will be overthrown <laughs> and you will be the one flourishing. Amen? Amen. Psalms 37. This is one of my favorite all time scriptures. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we'll be here all night. But in verse 1 it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down. Everybody say, cut down. Cut down. Cut down like the grass. Those that do wicked will be cut down like the grass. And they will wither as the green herb. Again, the Father is given the same wisdom to the Son gave later. The wicked will be cut down like the grass. That sounds just like what Solomon wrote. Where do you think Solomon got it from, right? His dad. Trust in Yahuwah, verse 3, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So you don't worry about what wicked people are doing. They're going to be mown down like the grass. They're going to be gone. They're going to wither like the green herb. But trust in Yah and do good. And you will dwell in the land. When the wicked are mown down, when the wicked are expired, when the wicked's house are overthrown, when you do good, you will dwell. When they disappear, you'll be there. When they disappear, you'll be there. Amen? Amen. Verse 5. Commit thy way unto Yahuwah. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Okay, when you commit your way to Yah, He'll bring it to pass. 
He'll bring forth your righteousness as the light. Okay, when it's dark at night, pretty soon the sun comes up and it comes over the whole land and everybody sees everything, right? He, he said he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. That means the things that people think you're doing wrong, he's going to bring light upon those things and put it right out in the open and show everybody that it was right. The things you think that, that people think you're doing that are extreme and in error and that's a little too much and you're being too holy and you're going too far with that Jesus stuff and uh, why are you reading the Bible all the time? I don't, I don't believe in all that. Are oh, you being extra super spiritual? He's going to make that thing shine. Pretty soon in the dark, nobody can see what's going on. But in the, in the middle of the day, the noonday sun, he's going to bring forth your judgment. He's going to bring forth your decision making. In the middle of the day, he's going to say, listen, this is the good decision that this person made. And they were obedient to me. He's going to bring forth your righteousness as the light. And your judgment as the noonday sun. Verse 7, rest in Yahuwah. And wait patiently for him. If I say wait patiently for him. Patiently. Rest in Yahuwah. Wait patiently for him. Okay? Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. You don't have to worry about when somebody is succeeding doing wickedness. You don't have to worry about when somebody is making a lot of money. Doing sin. Doing error doing their own ideas instead of doing God's will. You don't have to worry about it. Don't fret yourself. Don't get all stressed out. Okay? Rest. Rest in Yahuwah. Wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospers in His way. Sometimes when we have a covetous heart or we have a desire for prosperity or to be greater than somebody else or to be richer than somebody else or to have more influence than somebody else or to have more fame than somebody else. When we see somebody else succeeding, we're like, when is it going to be my turn? Or, oh man, why are they doing that? I need to do what they're doing. No. Do what God said. <laughs> Rest. And yeah, wait patiently for Him. You don't need to fret because of someone who's prospering in his way. Keep doing things God's way. Amen? Amen? We don't need to worry about people that are prospering and getting rich and famous doing things their way. Just keep doing things God's way. Rest in Yahuwah and wait patiently for him. Cease from anger, verse 8. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You don't have to seek no revenge. You don't have to curse them out. You don't have to hit them back. You don't got to worry about them. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. The wicked will expire. Yahuwah will come and he'll shine things. He'll shine the light. The darkness only lasts a few hours. Pretty soon it's going to be the noonday sun. And your judgment will be shown just like the noonday sun. Verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yahuwah, they shall inherit the earth. That sounds just like what Solomon was writing in Proverbs, doesn't it? He got it from his daddy. Okay? Evildoers shall be cut off, but they, those that wait upon Yahuwah, they shall inherit the earth. Okay? Even Yeshua himself, he was quoting the scripture. He said, Blessed are the meeks, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. Okay? For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yes, usual, diligent, but consider his place. And this shall not be. What happened to that liar? What happened to that false prophet that was prophesying that you didn't have to keep God's... What happened to him? What happened to... Pretty soon it's going to be like, what happened? What happened to that person that was lying about me? What happened to him? I don't know. It disappeared, right? Okay, so you don't have to worry about liars. Okay, all you got to do is wait on Yah. All you got to do is pray for your enemies. All you got to do is 
pray that they be saved, right? Because it's going to be two things that happen. They'll either change, repent, and do what's right, or they'll just fade away. Those are the two options, okay? It says, evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yah, they shall inherit the earth. And yet a little while, the wicked shall not be. You will diligently consider his place. Where did, where did he go? He ain't here no more. He's gone, right? So when you take God's yoke, and you take his commands, and you take his righteousness, and you walk in his wisdom, that's actually a force of righteousness. That's why I said you have to wait, you have to do, and you have to speak. Because when you do all those three things, it becomes a force of righteousness and the wicked literally have to disappear, okay? The only reason the wicked lasts is because the righteous are doing nothing. The righteous are not doing. The Bible says that when you, um, that he that keepeth the law contends with the wicked. So when you do what's right, you're fighting with the wicked. All, and then when you start to do what's right, when you start to wait on Yah, and you start to speak in the future tense of what He's going to do, it's just a matter of time. The wicked shall not be. Because the truth is going to spread so fast, one by one, people are going to see your example, one by one, and pretty soon the wicked will disappear. Where did, what happened to those people that was what happened to those people that was lying about this and lying about that? What happened to them? I don't know. I can't find them anywhere. Okay? That's what it's gonna be like. The Bible says, But the meek shall inherit the earth. Psalm thirty seven verse eleven. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Verse 12, The wicked plots against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Yahuwah shall laugh at him, for see, he seeth that his day is coming. Okay, so the wicked right now could be laughing at you, plotting against you, lying about you, telling people that you did wrong, telling people lies about you, um, but guess what? The Lord is going, doing what? Laughing at them. For he sees his day is coming. Right? The wicked could tell people, you know, that you're, the wicked could be racist against you. The wicked could be um, trying to get you fired from your job. But guess what? The Lord laughs because he sees that his day is coming. Okay? The meek shall inherit the earth. Those that are soft towards God's will. Those that are soft towards His obedience. Those are the ones that are going to inherit the earth. Those are the ones that are going to delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Let's go down to Psalms 37. Verse 34. It says, Wait on Yahuwah and keep His way. Wait on Him and keep His way. He shall exalt thee to do what? Inherit the land. You want to inherit the land? Wait on Yah. Keep his way. Okay? When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Same things we read in Proverbs. When the wicked are cut off, that's when you're going to see the inheritance of the land. That's where you're going to see the blessing. That's where you're going to see the authority. That's where you're going to see everything that God has promised you. When the wicked are cut off, you will inherit the land. In verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Just growing all over the place. Right? Yet, he passed away. After a certain amount of time, he passed away. Lo, he disappeared. He was not. I looked for him. He could not be found. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. While the wicked are disappearing, those that are walking in uprightness, they're going to be there. They're going to be strong. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous, verse 39, is of Yahuwah. He is their strength in time of trouble. And Yahuwah shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked 
and save them because they trust in him. Okay? So, if I say, I'll wait. I'll wait. If I say, just wait. Just wait. If I say, wait them out. Wait them out. If I say, wait on him. Wait on him. Waiting is a very important part of our faith walk. Okay, the Bible says that through faith and patience, we inherit the promises, right? Not just faith, but faith and patience. That's how we inherit the promises. A lot of things that we're waiting for, a lot of things that we want are based on time. We have to wait. We have to do His will. And we have to speak. Okay? We have to wait. We have to do. And we have to speak the future. That's our faith walk. Patience and faith. We have to wait on Him. We have to wake the wicked out. Yep, when they disappear, it'll be, you'll get what you you'll get what's coming to you when the wicked disappear. You ain't gotta kill them. You gotta be. You gotta. You ain't gotta shoot. The wicked gonna disappear. I'm gonna make them disappear. No, you ain't gotta do that. All you gotta do is because then you become the one that's wicked, right? All you gotta do is just wait. Don't fret. Don't be angry. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Quit worrying. Don't fret. Just wait. Okay. Keep doing what's right. I guarantee you. Two years. Three years. Four years. Seven years. Ten years. Twenty years. Thirty years. You stay right there. Stay in righteousness. Stay in wisdom. Stay in obedience. You will see the promises of God manifest in your life. Amen? Amen. So... Just wait on him. Amen? Amen. All right, Father, we bless your name. We thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for the gift of patience, the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we thank you, Father, that we can have patience while we wait upon you. We can do your will and be patient at the same time. Father, we thank you we can speak your future. We can speak your word in future tense. We can speak your promises in future tense, Father. And be, be patient and wait on you. We thank you that we will not fret. We will not worry. We will not fear. We will not do evil. Hallelujah. We will not walk in anger. We will not be discouraged. We will forsake wrath. We will forsake revenge. We will be faithful to your word. And we will wait upon you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen.